trae your gift? Put it over here. Put it on the floor. That's for you anyway. Mm. Yeah, Thank you. I feel so bad because I wanted to have your book up here. We oh, I so got the book. <gasps> you got a coin, honey. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I just have these. I'm like, look, and then it's like. All right, so how do I? You, you want me to stage it though? Um, you want to show it whenever you want to show it. You could show it. So we gotta put these on. I'm nervous. This is like my second time doing this. It's all good. It's all good. We gonna. We gonna we gonna go into it. And we gotta take a picture too. Facts. Alright, so I need. Yeah, we gotta put these on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mic check one, two, Mike one, check. two. Mic check, yeah. We good? <sighs> we can't hear you. Alright. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> cool. So you wanna keep the mics, uh, like, bring it right to the edge of the table. So. Uh, I thought they were stuck. Yeah, there you go. Boom. And, all right. Yeah, and if you can get as close as you can, the reason I say this is if you talk dead center and the mic, that's when you sound the best. And, Blue, if you could take the cage part and just lower it slightly. The, like, yeah, the black cage part. Uh, no, no, no. Like the, this? Yeah, this that Yep. Slightly lower that a little bit. And it's lower. Oh, lower. lower. There you go. Perfect. All right, all right. Yeah, you're good. All right. Okay, let's rock and roll. So we'll do uh, 10 seconds of silence, and we'll start recording. Okay, so this is episode two of Destin Desires, and today I have my first guest. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you for having me. My name is Ramel New Worlds, the young mogul, 27 years old now. I keep saying 26, I just turned 27. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. You know, business professional, entrepreneur, That's author, right. aspiring mogul. I'm just excited to be here. Yes. It's the first episode. We're going to kick it off the yes, right way. Yes, yes. Okay, so the first, all right, so this is my first episode with the guest. And so I segmented it, like, tell us about yourself. Tell us, like, you know, a little bit of how you were raised and, you know, what. how did that inspire you to, like, where you are now? I know, doubt. So, yeah, like, as I stated, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So we know growing up in the hood in Brooklyn, everybody just want to be the best dress you want to be the flies you want to have the most girls so i always grew up with that competitive nature in me and that inspired my entrepreneurship spirit you know my dad he was a correction officer he worked 25 years retired with a pension but he always told me never settle for that because a job stands for just over broke mm, and, and like my that. mom she was an entrepreneur so i had the best of both worlds she owned her own production company so i seen always come through with the fly Louis Vuitton custom made boots, the jewelry on, nice. the nice Explorer Jeep. And I was inspired by that. So I, I seen entrepreneurship around me. I just didn't know how to put the pieces together. Mm. So as I maneuvered throughout, you know, my years, I got into a little bit of trouble here and there, just dabbling into, you know, little legal activities. Right. And I played basketball. I started rapping. I was doing everything you could think of in the hood. Like when we grew up in the hood, it's either we rap. We trap and we play ball. So that was my that was my life, right? Right. And um, at some point, I realized why is this the only opportunities in my hood? Why why we only subject ourselves to those three things? Mm. And that's when I set that goal to become an entrepreneur, so that I can be in a position to provide opportunity to my community. So you know, back in I was what two years ago, twenty five years old, mm -hmm. I got my first introduction into real estate. Ooh, yeah, tell us so, about um, that. Yes, because I, I acquired my first brownstone in Brooklyn. It's a $1.2 million brownstone. And um, from there, that's when I pretty much kicked off my career. I uh, used some of that money to purchase a commercial cleaning franchise that I also own. Yes. Opened up my nonprofit organization called the Mogul Foundation. Yes. Started my credit repair company and just pretty much kicked the ground start hitting the ground running from there mm. so um that's that's pretty much my story in a nutshell i could go on and on and on but right no i <laughs> that's mean that's a good thing i want you to i want you and hopefully i could you know i know you're not going to be able to answer all questions today mm -hmm. but I hopefully i could have you come back and answer more Absolutely. but i know all right so you say you are a ceo you have the cleaning company you have the mogul home solutions and you have your your executive director yeah, nice yeah, yeah. now how do you like how do you manage being a CEO for all these companies like how do you manage this it's, it's tough it's, it's really really tough and I pretty much built up a, a schedule for myself you mm. know I'm really like disciplined with my time 
a lot of people may reach out. They want me to do things. And I'm like, bro, let me check my calendar. <laughs> and they be bad. Right, me trying to reach you. Yeah. I'm like, uh. <laughs> like, yo, bro, are you Hollywood? Up? Nah, I, I really got to check my calendar. I really have to be disciplined with my time. So that's one aspect of it. And then the other part is just having the right people around you. Mm, so support. a couple of years ago when I first started, it was just me doing this by myself. But it is is a concept that I built. You know, one of my mentors told me is knowledge plus credibility equals influence. Mm. So I built the knowledge around real estate, around credit, around being a true professional. And then I started to gain credibility around the people that was in my circle. They started to see I knew what I was talking about. I was living it. I was doing it. Right. And then from that, I built influence. So the people around me started to be inspired and wanted to be around me and just work for free. And that's how I started to gather my friends and say, Yo, listen, this is the vision. I remember I had a presentation, you know, and back in, in my brother's apartment in the basement, and I put together a nice deck, and I'm like, yo, this is where we want to go 10 to 15 years from now, you know, and, you know, just starting to have the right pieces together and build the systems, and this is where I'm at. Right, and look at you now. I'm so Absolutely. proud of you, y'all. I'm so proud. Wow. Um, yes, yes. Okay, and you also graduated. Can you tell us about, like, you know, your past life where you graduated from? Yeah. Yeah, so that's another component that I, I love to express because a lot of people think that college is a, a scam or is not the way to go. And I was a, I'm was a first-generation college graduate, college student. Me too. First one in my family to make it out of my friends to make it away to school. And that's really what was the game changer for me. Mm. When I went away to school, I started to see so many other people from different communities. They was worried about good credit how much cash you have saved, what's your career plans. And that was opposite from what I come from in the hood where I'm, I'm wearing Burberry, Louis Gucci, Prada. I, I remember, you yeah. Know, you, know, you know, I'm all about that. And nobody cared about that in college. They're like, all right, I don't even know what you're wearing. Mm. And that's when I started to wake up and think, hold on, like, some, something is wrong here. And that's when I started to do my research and learn and, you know, really dive into what's really important, you know, and it's really building your credit, setting up a financial foundation, so I went to University of Albany, one of the top business schools in the Northeast region. That's the reason why I went there. And um, it was a good experience for me. I, I loved it. You know, I had it really made me a man because mm. that's when you go away to school, that's your first opportunity to be on your own. You don't have mommy, daddy, anybody around you that's gonna help you and make decisions for you. So even down to when you're gonna get your next meal. Like mm. You have to make those t small decisions. When you're going to get your next paycheck, how you going to buy your books, how you going to survive. And that's what you know built me as, as a young man. And um, I graduated my bachelor's in business management, minor communications. And from there, I was offered a full-time job working for Pepsi Beverages Company. Nice. And that's, I, I leveraged my corporate career with my background in you know, business to ultimately bridge the gap and build my, my business and go into entrepreneurship. Right, nice. So did you feel do you feel like um the things that you learn in your classes, do you um apply that to life now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good question. A little bit of a little bit of, of, okay. of both, right? So for me, I, I look at college more so for the experience. And networking. In the network. Mm. Understand that you're just the number. It's thousands of kids. It's sixteen thousand kids on, on, on the campus. What are you going to do to separate yourself from everybody else? Mm. Like a lot of people go to class and they just sit there. Uh, but are you going to after hours and sitting with the teacher? Are you going to the student, I mean, to the teacher to get extracurricular activities or learning and things like that? Like, are you joining clubs? Are you really being active? Are you putting yourself out there? So that was one component of it. And then I also learned in the classroom, like one of my favorite professors, he always used to talk about entrepreneurship. And it was one... Um, I, it stuck with me to, to this day. He always say, listen, <laughs> if you can't write it down, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm. And that stuck with me forever because he always used to make us write down our marketing plan, write down our business plan. You have ideas. If you can't formulate it in, in actual sentences, it means nothing because we can always talk about our ideas. Everybody comes to you like, yo, bro, hey, I got this great idea, but can you write it down? Mm. If you can't do that, then you don't know what you're talking about. So true. So a lot of those concepts is stuck with me. So it's a little bit of both the experience and, and then actually like the information. Nice. Yo, you know, that's so true with the um writing everything down. Like I feel like a pen and paper, like those are your first tools that you need, you know? Thanks. That's a fact. So now, because you're you're such a busy guy and yeah. you have like a lot on your plate. Yeah. And I don't know, I heard that from somewhere, like, was that from you guys? I don't know. I heard it from somewhere where like, you know, you can't 
you can't complain we have a lot of things being played yeah. because yeah I, I was just I posted that on yes. Instagram I was talking go ahead about tell it. us tell us that come on let's yeah. go <laughs> yeah so this is a, 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 a <laughs> quote that I hold to me dearly and tight because it's really true is and it says you can't complain when your plate is full when mm. you ask God to eat you hear that and when things like for me I'll be honest with you for the last month or so, it's been really, really tough for me in my business. Mm. You know, because as I'm growing my business, I'm getting more clientele. And I haven't had the systems in place to uh, service that amount of clients. So now I'm you know, chasing my tail, trying to figure it out. You know, This property that I've been working on for the last six months, I'm going to, trying to get a closing date. There's a lot of things that come up. Mortgage company need a bunch of documents and repairs, construction. A lot of a lot of things is happening wow. in, in all parts of my business. I'm also producing a TV series. So right, I see. Congrats, yes. That, that's big. And everything started to weigh down on me. And mm. I found myself in a depressive state. Like, damn, things are not going right. Mm. You know, and, you know, good thing I have right people around. Like, my girl, I had a conversation with my girl. Yes. And she was just telling me, like, listen, this is what you pray for. You ask for this. Like, right. You wish people could own real estate. You own homes. You wish people can be producing a, a TV series. So if you ask for these things, you got to be ready for it. And that's when I started to play the old music back when in 2012 when I didn't <laughs> have all these things. I'm listening to that type of music, getting me back in the grind, getting me mm. back in that state. Like, listen, let me put, let me tighten up my shoes. Let me get right back into it. Right. And keep me, keep me motivated no matter what. Oh, motivated no matter what. So yeah. regardless of the struggle, like, you know, there's a better outcome on the other side. That's a fact. What is unlocking the boss code? What is this about? Tell yeah. us about this. So I, I am an author. This is the first book that I've released in March of 2019. It's called Unlocking the Boss Code. Unlocking the Boss Code. And it's five steps on how you could truly become a boss. And a lot of people, they see Diddy, Jay-Z. They see all these entrepreneurs and they want the glitz and the grammar. Mm. The glitz and the glamour, but they don't understand that there's a side B to that, which is hard work, which is stress, sacrifice. Are you willing to go broke for your vision? Mm. Are you willing to sacrifice sleep? Are you willing to sacrifice friends, family? Right. Like, do you have that mindset? That's where it starts at. Mm. A lot of people think it starts with money, but it starts with the mind. Because I could drop a million dollars in your hand, but if you don't even know how to move with it, you will lose it all. Right. So in this book, I pretty much break it down five steps that I utilized in my in my journey to really build that mindset to truly become a boss. And the acronym for boss is build an opportunity serving society. Mm. Because it's not about me. I like that. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm about providing opportunity. I know that at some point I'm I'm going to leave this place. I'm going to expire. I'm going to die. But I want to build something, build a legacy that with my I don't have kids yet, but when I do have kids, or my, my nieces, my nephews, my community, they're going to be able to reap those benefits. I'm building opportunities. I'm serving society. Entrepreneurs, we provide value. Right. That's all it's about. Anytime you, you when you're in business, it's about what can you do to service your client, service your customer. And then when you provide that value, you get that money. It comes to you. It chase you. It follow you. Right. So. That's, nice. that's what it's about. That's in this book. Make sure that go cop that. Right. Where can Amazon. they go? Right. There we go. You exactly. You can go on Amazon and type in Unlocking the Boss Code by Ramel New Worlds. Or you can go on my website, email. We'll get it shipped out to you. And um, Tell us you your know, Instagram. Listen. Your Instagram. My Instagram oh. is Mogul Lifestyle. Okay. M-O-G-U-L-L-I-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E underscore. There you go. You go on my website. MogulHomeSolutions.com, MogulFoundation.org, YouTube, subscribe, Mogul Elite Club. That's where I'm at, dropping all the free gems on real estate, business, credit, motivation, everything you can find it there. Thank you, yes. So now, because we have some background, um, we're going to go into our next segment. Yes, I have yes. a, a cup. Let me just get it. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So I have... Look at me, so unprepared. I forgot to put this on the it's table. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> so I have my Destined Desires, like little cup bowl, whatever you want to call I this. Like it. Yes. So this is where you'll. I kind of got this from Jada Pinkett Smith, mm -hmm. um, where you could just randomly pick up a paper and just have to. Well, you don't have to do anything, but you know, pay taxes. But um, you could just <laughs> um, God. right, exactly. Yeah. You could just um, if you would like to answer the question, you know, and just. All right, so you I just know, grab anything? Grab anything. All right, gold. I'm a king. I like gold. There you go. Yeah, all right. 
sorry for like the kindergarten, you know. Nah, this is fun. <laughs> I like this. Thank you. This like, I, I like this type of communication because we we lost this with social media. We don't have this type of interaction, so I'm all for it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what is one change one should make right now to get closer to success? Mm-hmm. Damn, that's good. <laughs> One change one should make to get closer to success. It all depends on where you at in life, and you have to figure out like what what's holding you back the most. So, f- for me, I know that like I, I like to drink, I like to go out, I like mm. to party. Right, turn know? up, turn I like up, to turn it up. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a Haiti boy, you from Brooklyn, but if I'm spending thirty five dollars on a on a bottle of Henny every weekend, you add that up times every. Four four weeks, time every month, like that's that's something I gotta cut off, you know. So that's one thing I would tell people: like, find out what is a bad habit that you may have that's holding you back. Like, okay. You may be spending, you know, twenty dollars a day on a, on a, on a, on a bag of weed. You high, but is that putting you in place? You save that up; it's gonna help you get your LLC. That might help you pay to get your logo. You might, you never know. Put you on a platform. Like it's, it starts very small. Okay. Um. That's that's a really good question. And I know you were saying you don't even know like and I feel like <laughs> sometimes you probably answer the questions before you know cause yeah. you said your mind. Yeah. That's the you it's know the mindset. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the mindset honestly like if you don't have that mindset you can't go nowhere. Okay. In life. You heard everybody? Yeah, yeah, bad yeah. habits. No, that's true. You have to know. You have to know you have bad habits first. Facts. Realizing so it's still the you know realizing, you know. Go ahead, pick another one. Self self-awareness is key. Self-awareness, yes. All right, so what's this one? Which obstacles did you face while trying to achieve your success? Mm-hmm. Damn. Story time. Um, <laughs> wow. Or don't so have to I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, like, what my first my first deal, mm-hmm. it was tough for me, right? Like, the property that I purchased, it, it cost 600000 I paid 600000 for it. It was, worth, it was worth one point two. So I got it for half price. But coming out of college... I was only making fifty two thousand dollars a year at that time. Mm. My credit wasn't the, the best. I had I had like twenty thousand dollars saved up, which was a decent amount of money, but it wasn't enough to get me to be approved for a mortgage of that magnitude. Mm. And I went through loops and hoops to try to get that money. I called up family, friends, like, yo, bro, I got this big opportunity. We got we, we buy this property, we put it on the market for one point two, we doubling our profit. You getting the percentage, let's get this. Nobody had money. Nobody had opportunity. But I'm seeing everybody going and financing new cars. A mm-hmm. lot of people spending money in the club. I'm like, bro, what happened? And I, I want, I'm not going to say no names, but a family member <laughs> of mine. No names, no names. A family member of mine told me that I was over my head. Like, yo, this is too big for you. You jumping too far. And, like, start small. And I, I felt like I hit rock bottom because I, had, I, I wasn't able to get it. I wasn't able to get approved for the mortgage, you know. So, But I wasn't going to stop. Right. And, you know, I, I did whatever I could, and I ended up connecting with a mentor, which was a friend of my dad's. You know, she worked in the real estate business for, like, 35 years. She's old enough to be my grandmother. Wow. And I walked into her office, and I said, I need help. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm starving. I'm out, I'm out here. I want to, you know, get to the top. Or I want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I brought the deal. The numbers made sense. And she's like, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to take you to where you need to be. And we found an equity partner. So, like. It's somebody that has money, but you have to basically help partner with them on a deal. They have to have equity in the deal. Right. So I, I didn't like it at, at first because I'm like, it's my deal. Why would y'all <laughs> let somebody get a percentage of that? But you know, at the end of the day, you can't worry about how much other anybody else making. Just worry about what you making exactly. because you got to know what you bring to the table. And you know, we end up getting a deal done, and that was my first deal. I made six figures on that deal, and I was able to just continue to kick off from there. But my next property is going. So the, the, to answer that question, I would say the obstacles is doubt. Mm. You know, I had family and friends that doubted me. They told me that I w- it was over my head. I, I had obstacles of not being financially stable at that time. I'm out of college. Nobody come out of college with, with all that type of money to get that. So, you know, just don't let nobody ever tell you what you can't do, man. That's 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 everybody's obstacle. True. So that's my biggest one. And I have I have two things. So you said um the mentor. Like where I know you said that's your father's friend or whatnot. Yeah. But where can you like where would you recommend for a person that doesn't have, you know, anybody, where would you recommend them to find a mentor? Listen, we have <laughs> social media now. That's true. <laughs> it's no excuse. I tell all my guys every time we have a meeting, I say, Why y'all not building a brand? Why y'all not leveraging these people that's on social media? You can mm-hmm. hit at a click of a button. People throwing flyers up, they're gonna be at certain places. Go there. 
Are you paying to go and be around these people? People have workshops all the time. It might cost a couple grand, but are you willing to invest in order to get around certain people that's going to help take you to the next level? Mm. I done paid thousands of dollars, like thousands of dollars to have mentors mentor me. And I've made my money tenfold because knowledge is something that's just powerful. And if you go and apply, you can make that money back. So I would definitely say social media, um, networking events, um, you know, asking questions too. Like my, like again, my, my dad, that was just an old friend of his that helped him get an apartment when he was without me, we was young. That was the first apartment he got when we just came out the house, me and my brother. I'm a twin, you know that, me and my brother. So he had to dig deep into his phone book to find somebody that just helped him get an apartment. Wow. And then that person was essentially the person that helped me get my first deal. So the person, the mentor could be right in front of you. And you won't even know it. Right in front of you, you don't <laughs> even know it. You, and, that, and that's one thing I want to say, too, in our community. We never want to take advice from somebody that's just like, look just like us mm. or that's in, a, that's in the same community as us. Because they think, oh, what you know better than me. You just you look just like me. Right. You just working with me or you doing like... You never know. So anybody can have some information that you don't have. You can have information that I don't have. I have information that you don't have. Let's exchange that. You can be my mentor in fitness. You know, you out here doing your thing. I know I'll be watching. I see it. <laughs> you, I don't have a podcast. You just, you know, built your own podcast. You can mentor me in that. I can mentor you in credit, real estate, business. Well, every, that's, like that's everything. That's what it's about. Like, <laughs> Literally. You know, everybody, you know, be in their own way. Everybody got pride. Right. Oh, so. pride. You got to put the pride to the side. Yeah. And another question, you said a lot of people doubted you. Have you ever doubted yourself? Because I know I have, especially um, with starting this and, you know. Say the truth. Mm -hmm. I never doubted myself. Mm. I, I never doubted myself. I, I, at times I felt like upset that things wasn't working my way, but something made me, I just know I'm going to be a star. Like, okay. I, I always knew at a young age that I'm going to be a star. When I was young, my nickname was Knowledge. Like my, my brother, my sister, my mom, they used to always call me Knowledge because I was always spelling, spelling bees, but pronouncing all the words. Like, Yo, you're going to be great. And I, I knew I was going to be great. So I never, like anybody tell me I can't do something, I'm just going to show you that I could. Right, prove so, them wrong. That's just it. <laughs> People might say it's cocky, I don't know. I'm, I, I just feel like, I'm 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 unstoppable. No matter what, I'm gonna get to it and make it happen. And you should because you know that's funny. Um, like I said, I kind of like doubted myself, you know, doing this or whatnot. But then it's like, why am I doubting myself? Like, if I doubt myself, then other people are gonna doubt me, nice. and they're not gonna believe in me. So I have to believe in myself, you know, first. You have to believe in yourself first. Like, you know, my my name is the Young Mogul. I, I announced myself as the Young Mogul, and now I got people calling me Yo, Young Mogul, Young Mogul. Now, I'm not a mogul yet, but in my mind. I am. Right. Like, I walk around. You see me. I, I, I wore a suit today. Right. You know, but like, I mean, you always wear suits, I, don't you? I always wear suits, but that's because I want to. I'm representing myself as a, as a businessman. I'm a mogul. I got in my mind. I got to believe that. Right. So that everybody out there in the community and the world could believe that as well. Right. So that's it. I have to change up my dressing because look at me. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> looking nah. like he owned a podcast. Like nah, you know, nah, like nah, I'm looking nah. like I'm the guest. Like okay, you know. <laughs> now I have this to use this is you right nah, here. Nah, nah, no, 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 no. But this is like you said, learning. Like even just looking like okay, presentation. You know, I want big hoop. You know, I want it to be taken more serious. So yeah. I know like. I have to change certain things and I have to even speak differently and whatnot, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I'm learning. I'm taking notes. I'm you, taking you, notes. You're going in the right direction. Like, as long as you try every single day, you're going to learn every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Here, pick another one. Pick another one. It's about you. <laughs> yeah. What was the hardest decision you had to make? Sheesh. Dude, where, <laughs> where did you get these from? Man, it, listen, like you said, write it down. I just wrote all these questions where down one day. Where did you get these from? Wow. The <laughs> hardest decision I ever had to make. So this is another quote that I put on Instagram, and it's, it, it, it's really the truth. One of the hardest decisions you ever have to make is to walk away or to try harder. Mm. And that's anything in life. You could be in a relationship. The relationship could be at a, at a real bad point. Are you going... Try harder to make it work, or are you just gonna walk away? That's a like that's a decision you have to make. Walking away might be better. Trying harder might be better. You don't know, but that that's why it's so hard to make. And I had to make that in business as well because I, I felt that way when I started real estate. Two years in, I'm spending a bunch of money. I'm grinding, and I'm not getting to where I need to be. Mm. So I'm like, am I gonna walk away, or am I gonna try harder? And that that's a hard decision. So right. That's that's the hardest decision I had to make. Right. I don't even know if you saw like, you know, we all up to, you know, no memes or whatnot. It was a meme and it was like a 
I don't know if it was a, a bunny trying to pull out the carrot, but like the leaf, you know, the top of the carrot, the leaf, mm-hmm. one of the bunnies, you know, the, the leaf was big, but then in the soil they had a small ass carrot. But then it was the bunny next to it that had a small leaf and under the soil was a big ass carrot. So, you know, it's like you never, you never you know. Never know. That's a fact. Don't walk away because once you get that, it's like, oh shit, wow, you know, yep. came this far. That could be your win right there. Right. Again. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Got some questions. I guess we'll come in apart. One million dollars or one million friends. I, I I was glad you 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 know you was gonna pick that one too. Yeah, I that's hoped. A good question. Because you were saying something about if I gave you one million dollars right now in your hand, where you gonna spend it? So I'm happy you picked that question. One million dollars or one million friends. Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Oh man, that's a really good question. You could take take your time. Um. One million? I don't know. I probably, I'm going to do the one million dollars. Yeah. I don't need one million All right, friends. tell us why. Tell us, tell us why. Tell I don't, us why. I don't need one million friends because it's not about quantity for me as far as like friends and the people that's around me. I want quality. Mm. Like I can have five real friends around me and those are the people that's like really pouring into me, getting me where I need to be and we build up. You know, we do, we change the world together. Because I've been around like 30, 40 people. We out, we go into the club and then, you know, everything go down and like only one person there, two people there. Like I, I've been there, you know, like. Starting a business, everybody together, but when you start really moving, you don't see nobody. So, give me the one million. I'm, <laughs> and I'm just going. I'm gonna go ride out with a few people around me. I'm you good right. with that. No, you're right. And then I remember you were saying, like, you know, um, starting up, it wasn't a lot of people that supported you. So mm-hmm. it's like, why would you have one million friends and you don't even think one million of them are gonna support exactly. you? Exactly. Okay, makes sense. Makes That's sense. It. Makes sense. Going. That was a good question. <laughs> Hold a time out. Just once again, I just have to thank my girl Jada Pinker Smith because this is where I got her idea oh, from. Yeah. Red Table Talk. This is where, and at the end, when they, st- this is where I got the idea from. This is good. I like how you're giving credit though. Because mm-hmm. a lot of, you'd be surprised people out here these days. They just be, they take stuff and don't give credit. So that you always got to give respect. Don't sue me. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> give it credit. What time to wake up? What time do you wake up to start the day? Yeah, 6 a.m. I'm up 6 a.m. Every day. Do you like meditate before you like you know before I, you start your day? Yeah, or I, I lay in the bed before when I get up. I just pray as I'm still laying in the bed. Just pray that I'm I'm up. To give me the energy to go out there and you know just attack and be successful and just put all my put everything on the line. Like I got breath in my body. I got energy in my body. I'm gonna put it all in the line every single day. Right. So you know that's that's the time I wake up. What time do you go to sleep? What does uh, it vary? If I, I I go to bed like ten ten thirty, I'm okay. Like, I'm an early sleeper. Cause you gotta I, get up. I early. gotta get up early. <laughs> I'm not a night owl at all. There you I go. go. I go. I gotta get my sleep. <laughs> Do you drink coffee? What like how do you get I, your energy? I used to drink coffee. Um, I just I be just running off energy in my body. Honestly, anytime I have anything like big going on, like an event to speak at or a big meeting or a big appointment, I can't eat. Like I I be running off of just straight energy in my body i'm just all excited and worked up so that's that's just that's just it right like, i just eat regular and i see you guys are going to from um, Rutgers university to yeah. speak are you excited about that i'm super excited about that so that's uh, the young and wealthy tour me and my partner isaac grace the millennial hope dealer so he does real estate at an all-time high he does wholesale and real estate nice so you know wholesale and real estate is essentially you just the middleman you find the good deals and then you you know sell them off for a fee right so he's been killing it he grew a nine hundred thousand dollar business you know wow. in, in in one year you know so that's he my partner and i'm going to be going to be going hitting the university so last year we did our first tour which was you know young and wealthy part one mm-hmm. and we had workshops all throughout the tri-state, you know, New York, Philly, Jersey, Connecticut. Um, yeah, that's the, those are the states that we hit. We just had multiple workshops throughout that, and we killed it and financially empowered over 300 millennials. Wow. This year, we said we want to target the millennials even more. What better way to find millennials than the college campuses? That's right, where they smart. are. <laughs> we can find thousands of millennials in one spot. So that's what we said. All right, we're going to put together this college tour. So right now we have 12 universities so far that we hit in, you know, throughout September, October, and going into early November. Okay. Rutgers is the first university, and we pretty much giving them the blueprint mm. to cashing out and beating the college trap. So right. when I when I say college trap, a lot of people are like, what? College trap? <laughs> like, 
When we talk about college trap, I mean the, the, the bad financial habits that you learn while you're in college. So, like, they, they throw us all these credit cards. We're getting them in the mail. We're burning down our credit. We're maxing out. But who taught us about credit in college? Right. Do Nobody. we have credit courses in college? Nope. <laughs> At all. So, <laughs> that, that's, that's a trap. We get refund checks. We get all these loans. They're giving us money. But are they are, we, are they teaching us how to how to use money? Right. Like, are they really teaching us how money works? Not at all. That's the trap. Mm. You, know, you get all this student loan debt; it's guaranteed. You have to pay your student loan debt. Well, they coming but, for you. But <laughs> you don't have a guaranteed career that's going to help you pay that back. Like it's, it's, the, it's a chance that you might get a good job. And what's the percentage of the graduates that actually have a career in their, in, in the field that they went to school for? So that that it. that's why I call it the trap now. That's that's the only part about it. Other than that, if you understand money, if you understand how to strategically go to college and still build your credit up, use your refund check, stack them, put down a down payment, go get a nice little property, rent it out to your roommates. Now you collecting money and you have money coming in so that if you don't get the career you're looking for, you're still able to pay your student loans. Right. And if you do, you like you become an, uh, a lawyer, right? You go into school to become a lawyer. How about you have the entrepreneurship mindset on building your own, getting your own firm, mm. not just going and joining somebody else's. So that's pretty much what we're targeting the millennials to give them that game, give them that mindset, understand, listen, we got to understand money. Right. We, we got to understand how to beat the trap. For real, because you know? it's hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Like, yeah. But at least, where, where were you when, <laughs> where were the you guys when I, you know, when we were in school? Well, we, I had I, to go through it. That's, that's true. the thing. Experience. Like nobody told us this. And mm-hmm. like, luckily for me, my dad, Mm. He burned down his credit. Like nobody, because nobody told him he couldn't borrow a, a sandwich from Subway if he wanted to. His Damn. credit was shot. But his lessons was my learnings. Mm. You know, so he always told me from young, yo, get a secure credit card, start you know making your your payments on time, build your credit. While I was in college, wow. so I already had the basics of it. And while I was in college, taking classes. I invested in an online real estate school called the J. Morrison Academy, mm. and J. Morrison is one of my mentors. So. While I'm in class, I'm also paying $97 a month for this real estate course as a broke college kid. But I felt it was it was a necessity for me to, to further my education outside of what, you know, they was teaching me in the classroom. Right. So that's how I also learned about credit, but I didn't master it. You know, at this point, I've mastered it. So now I'm like, yo, listen, if I could go save thousands of other millennials like me, that's what I'm going to do. Because I wish I would have knew a little bit more. Right. And nobody didn't teach us this. So nobody. I, I, you well, you, you, you're here to teach us. So Thanks. thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And also, um, I don't know if you know, because I know you pull into colleges, but I want to shout out to my girl, Zenobia Slade, because she told me about this. Um, You know how they have in, in public schools, they have like different people coming in like they teach about sex they teach about college you could be a vendor and you could actually sign up your business or with many of the businesses that yeah, you have yeah. and you can um register with the department of education and they'll pay you so you could go to different public schools now you're not just getting college students you're going down to the younger like getting right. them while they're really young so yeah. this is embedded so by the time they get to college they already own property right. and shit so i'm gonna definitely send you the information but Definitely, we need the younger generation too. Yeah. Now I appreciate that. I, I, I'm, I'm working on that. I had like knowledge, you know, about that, but I definitely would appreciate the information and the contact because, like, through my nonprofit, the Mogul Foundation. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's my nonprofit, and you know, we strive to teach, train, and mentor young, promising individuals yes. on how to become true, true entrepreneurs and like dreamers, and right how to make their reality, make their dreams become reality. Okay. So Mogul stands for Men of Good Understanding Leadership, mm. and the reason why I named it those acronyms is because traditionally a mogul is somebody that's powerful, dominant in a particular industry. So, you know, music, hip hop. You think about Jay Z, Diddy. You know. Real estate, you hear, you hear all these guys. So for me, it was like, all right, you're a mogul. You have all this money, power, but how do you use that mm. to influence and create other people, other moguls and stuff like that? So that's what, as I strive and become a mogul in my own right, I'm also, you know, striving to help bring other people along. So, you know, that's part of my path so that I can get partnered with the Department of Education and we could put programs in place in these schools. Yes. So it, I, I want to share this with you. I don't like to share this with the world because this is in my mind. Do you, if you don't, I, you don't want I, to. I want to share this with you. Okay. Now, because I feel at home. But my ultimate goal, like my ultimate goal in life is to build the recreation center nice. in my hood, in my hometown in Brooklyn. Just one. I, I, um, what about a couple? 
of course a right, couple, but I gotta get to that one. Like, but it's, it's, it's not the typical recreation center. Okay. It's gonna be financial literacy based. So instead of them just teaching them, you know, it's gonna be more activity based. So okay. we play games and we do activities, but it's surrounding. So for example, when you play play Monopoly, we played Monopoly growing up, but nobody really told us that Monopoly is real, real life. Shit, right? <laughs> you know That's what I mean? Real Four shit. greenhouses, one red hotel. That's really how life goes. Like real wealthy people in real estate, you buy four greenhouses, small houses, cash them in, and go get something big. Do wow. it again, cash them in, go get something big. So we're going to play the game, but I'm going to teach you how we do this in real life. Smart. And we just continue to pull it together in all type of ways. Yo, you know what's so funny? I've played that game so many times when I was younger, and I didn't like put two and two together like yo this is how it's supposed to <laughs> that, or this is yeah. how wealthy be- like wow and if you don't pay your taxes you're in jail yeah, exactly like yeah. yo yeah. It's, wow it's, the, it's real life and a lot of this coming like subliminal messages but we got to pay attention okay and we need to do our research and you know we talk about you know oh you know they bond they coming back and kicking us out of the hood but we should have seen this a long time ago you could go online and you could google urban development and you can see what's going to happen in your community 5, 10, 15 years from Before, now. right. We're not doing that. But when it happens, we we up, yo, what's going on? Be proactive. Right. Get the information. Right. Um, It's funny you said that because um, I'm going to save this for an, a podcast when I talk about apartments or whatnot. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, like renting, rent, not owning, like yeah, renting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like they don't tell you, like, to join community boards because they talk about education. They talk about the up and coming around your neighborhood and it's like yo like you could get a lot of incentives for just being a board member yep. but people don't know that you know mm-hmm. so guys you could google whatever you live and google your community or whatnot and i think i'm like on what bronx community board one or some shit i don't know listen you get on the board <laughs> it could be on the board but where you work so it's not only where you live but you can also go- know what's going on where you work oh that's dope Mm-hmm. All, right, all right so yeah we dropping them gems <laughs> I'm, and i just want to commend you Thanks. This is the first episode, so I'm making history. I'm right, for real. Episode. Like, the I'm first, excited. Yo, first guest. Yes, first, first guest. guest. This is not the first episode, first guest. But I'm excited. I'm making history. But I do want to commend you for putting together this platform for me to even discuss these opportunities Thank and this you. information because we got to control our own narrative. We got to control our own media. We can't rely on the news, CNN, and all this stuff to talk about the things that we need to hear. Right. So by you creating this podcast, it's just putting together an opportunity to Thank get this you. message out. So let's. You know, I, I, can't, I, I can't wait to see how big it's going to be. Thank you. Me neither. And thank you, too, because I'm like, yo, like, I'm looking for people to interview. And, you know, Sabrina's at my house. She's like, yo. Girl, hit it right now. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how Sabrina is. <laughs> yeah. Girl, I'm like, you know what? You're right. And I'm like, nah, but he's busy. He's not He's not going to take the time. But then I'm like, you know, oh, shit, he wrote back. Like, oh, nah, like. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the time to, Thank you. to help and inspire. I'm not, I'm super, super dope. I come, we come from the bottom. Right. We work together. Since you right. what? Since you Packing what? bags. Like, you know, before real estate, I was packing bags in a red apron at like, Century 21. <laughs> you know that. So I'm always going. I'm ever. always going to take time and be and make sure that I, I I put myself where I need to be to help and you Thank know, you. take advantage of opportunity. That's what we do. Thank you. So don't ever don't ever feel like that. I'm Thank busy, you. I but appreciate I make it. Make time for the people that that matter. Thank you, because you helping me make history by you know you reposting my stuff. You know we help fact. each other. Facts. That's, That's what fact. it's about. That's a fact. Oh, we got we got some more time. Come on, let's go. Yo, let's keep this thing. Yeah, going. let's we, keep yo, this. Gonna have to kick us out of here. Yeah, <laughs> soon, soon. Real Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you ever have a down moment or moments in your life when you felt like giving up? Sheesh. You're going to make me get too deep in this mofo. <laughs> I mean, that's the point. I mean, you don't have to, you know, nah, wherever nah, you nah, feel this, comfortable. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm comfortable. I told you this is family right here. So Dang. the 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 point where I felt down the most like my mother and my grandmother passed away. My mother passed away. And this is in my book, people who write, anybody who bought my book know this story, but Unlocking the Boss Code. Yeah. Where we can find it in Amazon. Amazon. Go on mm-hmm. Amazon. You can go on my website, mogulhomesolutions.com, and you know, email us and we'll better ship you a copy out. Definitely. But the 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 most down moment that I had is my mother passed away when I was twelve. Mm. And my grandmother is the one who told me that my mother passed away. Mm. But when my grandmother told me, she said I knew something was wrong because she pulled me in the bathroom and she said, you always going to have me. Like, you you know I'm always going to be there for you. And I'm like, Grandma, why are you telling me this? Like, what's going on? And then she said, yeah, your mother passed away, you know, but I'm, you always going to have me. Mm. And 
Myself at 12 years old, I believe my grandmother. When she told me that, I really believe that I'm always going to have her. Like, I, this happened to me, but that was a that was a, her saying that was a, like some type of comfort for me. Right. And she passed away two years later when I was 14 from, the, from, from cancer. Both of them passed away from cancer. So I felt destroyed because I'm like, Grandma, you told me you was going to be here. You told me like. But that's it's, I, at a young age, I can't process that. Now right. I'm older, I get it. It's beyond her. Like it was her time to go. But I was down at that point in my life. You mm. know, just being 14 years old. Now I'm in high school. Now I don't really have no you know woman or motherly figure in my life to help me navigate and how to speak to women, deal with women, how to just like my dad. That's just men, like bro. Right. Man up. <laughs> what you talk about? Why you <laughs> why are you crying? Why are you crying? So I can't even have a I can't even have a sore spot right now. You know, so that's tough for me. All that is bottled up in me and. I just found myself doing different things there. Now that's when I get into a little legal activities mm-hmm. and you know what I mean, doing different things that I, that I know that's not me. I wasn't raised to be that way. Right. But you know, that that's when you when you in dark moments and you don't really know how to express yourself verbally, you start expressing yourself, you know, through, through certain actions. So, okay. You know. Okay, and, 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 and not to get, you know, too, you know, into, but where, because I know, you know, a couple of students at my job, their parents passed away, and, you know, they're scared, or they don't know, you know, what would you recommend somebody young that's going through a similar situation? Um, Honestly, they got to go to counseling, therapy, mm. because... I, I never went to counseling therapy for my mother, my grandmother passed away. I wish I would have. Now I'm old and I'm dealing with certain things, and I'm like, I wonder why I'm dealing with certain things. Mm-hmm. But when people die and you're young, like important people like that, you need to be able to have conversations with people that's going to help you cope through this. Too many times in our neighborhood, people in our community, people lose parents and you know de- people that's dead to them, and now the next day, you still got to go to work. You still got to go to school. Life is still there. Going you don't right. have time to process that. So for anybody that has that has happened to take time to process that, go through the proper channels to get that type of attention. Right. Uh, but on the other side of it, another quote is, "You never know how strong you are until being as strong as your only option." Wow. Because a lot of people who have both their parents today, they might say, "Oh, I don't know what I could do if if I lost my mother or my dad," and I I felt the same way. I said, "I don't know what I'll do if I lose my mother, or my grandmother." It happened. And now I'm I'm, I'm thriving. You Look know, at I you. know I'm looking. They looking down on me. They Smiling, happy what right. I'm doing. So when you when being strong is your only option, you 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 really test your strength and you see how strong you are. So you know, if anybody that's going through that, you know, you understand that you know you you are stronger than what you may think you are. Preach. Yeah. Preach. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. We 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 at church right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Nah. We go some more. We yeah, go some more. We have a little. Yeah, you probably could get like. Two, three more in. Did people or a person believe in your vision? Wow. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So my dad gonna be happy when he hear this because he always gonna get credit. He like, yo, why you ain't shut me up? Why you ain't shut me <laughs> shout up? Shout out to you, Pop. Shout I'm, out. I'm the real dad mogul. <laughs> but I, I tell you this, right? My father is a single father. He he mm. lost his wife, which was my mother. And he had to raise two twin boys on his own. And he did it. He put us both through college. Right. And anything I ever said I wanted to do, he always told me I could do it. I tell my dad, oh, Dad, I want to jump off this roof. All right, let's go. Start. <laughs> go back. Make sure you get a good head start, and you can make it. Like right. you can make it to the other side of the roof. Like nice. that's the type of dad he is. Like I, he never gonna ever tell us something that we cannot do. And that's one thing I love about him because I have friends that want like one of my close friends. He wanted to play football. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Yo, he he never was able to play football because his mom always told him, no, you need to go get a city job and work because like, you got to pay the bills.' Bag. Yeah, the bag. He like, but I want to play football. Football is not secure. Go get a job." And then that stole his dreams from him because Damn. if he would have had the support from his mom to probably put him in camp and pay for some type of training, he could have been the next Odell. Right. He could have been the next o- Antonio Brown. You never know. So for me, I never had that issue. Anything I tell my dad. He's gonna jump through the roof. Let's do it. Nice. Yo, dad, I wanna buy this house. I remember when I I was writing this book. I said, Yo, dad, I'm about to write me a book. He was like, How you gonna do that? So you producing a movie, you got the real estate going on, you got all these things going on. How are you gonna have the time? I'm like, Dad, I'm gonna take an hour a day, or no matter what, and I'm gonna sit here and write on this book. He said, All right, I, I, I wanna see it. Let's go for it. Let's make it happen. Nice. Eight months later. Done. Unlocking the boss code every on Amazon 
And if I didn't have that that support and that belief in, from that one person, I don't know if I'd be able to, you know, get certain things done. But, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Shout out to you. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to my pops, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is my biggest fear? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest fear is failure. Mm. To keep it 100 with you. I just never, I don't want to be a failure. Okay. I, I would die on trying doing, to do whatever I got to do. I don't want to fail because... I grew up and I had old elders in my family who always told me, Yo, yeah, do this and do that and do this and do that. And when you're young, you, you listen. But I, 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 I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But as you get older, you start to see people for what they really are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hold up, you telling me to go do this, but you never did it. Right. How you? What the hell? Why are you telling me something you never did? <laughs> and you, you failed me. You failed. You failed. You know, so for me... I don't want to fail anybody that's coming up under me. You okay. know, I want to make sure that my little nieces, my nephew, my little cousins, my kids, when I do have them, that they could say that your daddy or you know Ramel, Melo, Uncle, whatever they call me, he 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 won. He won. He won that life, and it ain't even about money. You know, winning that life is being in a position to provide opportunity and inspire. If I did that, I, I won that life, and I don't want to fail at all. So that's that's my biggest fear. There you go, failing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. One more. This is save the best for last. Pick a good one. No, first of all, you gotta. All right, yeah, mix it, it up. <laughs> <laughs> like you just pick it. No, we gotta. All right, you probably gonna pick the same, <laughs> the same paper. Nah, it don't matter. It don't matter. That's that's the one to be. You know, the special one. Is? No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> They're all just random. Did I, black? Nah, did I do a black one already? Yet? All right, just get this one. Yeah, look, I yeah, I gotta fix. Don't worry, I'll come up with a better idea next all right, time. All right, all right. This one, we can't do this. This one's kind of similar to the other one. Okay. Like, what time do you wake up? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I probably, all right. Which one? All right. Yeah, because I think I asked. Did I have two of these things in here? All right, I'll go over that later. <laughs> like, wait. Um, it says, would you have done things differently? If so, what? Mm. Uh... I would, I would, I wouldn't do anything differently. Nothing. I, I feel like everything happened for a reason. You know, I'm, I know God is directing me. So whatever, whatever comes my way, I know God put me in position for that, and I can handle it. So I wouldn't do anything differently. I'm happy. I'm blessed. You know, I'm a, I'm a homeowner. You know, I'm an author. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a public speaker. I'm an inspiration. And I'm happy that, and I'm here, and I can't wait to see what it's going to be like, you know, 10, 15 years from now. So I wouldn't do anything differently at this nice. point. Nice. Ooh, I like that. I like yeah. that. So we're going we're gonna to just, you know, wrap it up. So can you just tell us, you know, again, who you are, where we could find, you know, your platforms? Let yeah, us know. Yeah. So, again, thank you. Destined Desires, Francis, Ooh. I appreciate you. It's Rob Mel, New World's The Young Mogul. I'm here unlocking the boss code. You can find that on Amazon or you can go on my website, mogulhomesolutions.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Definitely. giving out free game. Mogul Elite Club on YouTube. Please go subscribe. Instagram, Mogul Lifestyle underscore. And that's Facebook. regular life, right? L-I or L? L-I. All right. L-I-F. All right. So um, regular life. But yeah, man, I'm excited. Young and Wealthy Tour is kicking off next week, Monday Ooh. at Rutgers University. How can we go- get tickets? It's free. But we just Young walk and, in go, or? No, youngandwealthytour.com. Young and Wealthy Tour. Go register Young. for free. Okay. We invested our own money. We traveling. We flying around. We going to university. Um, no, we going to Virginia State University. What? We going to Tuskegee yes. University in Alabama. We got Temple University. We got you all, but I'm going back to my school. Wow. I'm hype. I'm ready for it. So we and putting up our own money. We Our flights, our, tra- our team, transportation to give out a free game. So make sure you take advantage of that young and wealthy one young and wealthy tour dot com, and um, I think I hit everything. I think I hit all the buckets. And if you need your credit repaired, restored, you need business funding, I'm your guy, Mogul Credit Institute on Instagram. Email us at management at mogulcreditinstitute dot com, and you know we help you. Thanks, thank you, you so you much. You need to be You're my first guest. Thank you, and guys, this is my second episode. <laughs> Check me out, Dustin Desires underscore on Instagram. And if you have any um, questions you would like me to add to my bowl, because look, as you see, I had a repetitive kind of question. <laughs> Just um, email me, Dustin Desires LLC at gmail.com. and you know, write me a DM. See you guys. <laughs>